So, when you don't know how to do something, how to fix something, or how something works, what do you do? Ask a teacher? Ask your parents? Ask your friends? Ask someone you really know and trust? No, you go to the internet and ask some randos. But I'm not talking about creeps here, I hope. No, I mean the people of the internet. You know, those people who make how-to videos. Because chances are, if you're trying to figure out something, someone on the internet has already figured it out for you. Things like, how do I unsend a text? No. How do I do a winged eyeliner? How do I get rid of the zit? By Friday night. How do I get out of gym class? How do I screen cap Snapchat without getting caught? They'll never know. But then there are things in life that don't have an easy fix, that don't have a simple solution, that don't have a how-to video. Things like what to do when you have problems with family, or when it seems like you have no control in your life, or what to do when someone has done something to you. I mean, clearly, they gotta go. The truth is, there's a lot of life that doesn't have a solution you can just find online. So how do you know what to do when you don't know what to do? Not long ago, I was at the grocery store. I was just there to pick up a few essential items. And about halfway to my car, I noticed a $20 bill on the ground. Now feel free to judge me all you want, but these are some of the thoughts that were running through my mind. Just ignore it and leave it, because whoever dropped it is gonna come back and look for it. Take it, it is your lucky day and God gave you a special $20 bill from heaven. It's the parking lot, it's not like somebody dropped it by the register. If it were that big of a deal, they wouldn't have dropped it to begin with. You need to take this inside and give it to a manager because someone's gonna come looking for it. $20 bills is a lot of money, but it's not like someone dropped a stack of cash or their wallet, who cares if you take it? Y'all, I had all the thoughts. Plus, I was in a rush. So with all of these options, the question that was blaring in my mind was, what is the right thing to do? What a dilemma. I mean, what would you do in this situation? I know some of you would confidently say, I would take it to the manager, that's the right thing to do. And others of you would say, take the money, it's not a big deal, finders keepers. Now sometimes, knowing the right thing to do, it just isn't simple in the moment. Ultimately, I decided to take the money to the customer service desk. But at that time, I just didn't know what to do. That's what we're talking about in this series. What to do when you don't know what to do. Now today, we're gonna look at the dilemma of what to do when you don't know what is right and what is wrong. It seems like doing the right thing should be clear and obvious, right? But we all know that isn't always the case. I mean, there's a reason why doing the right thing can be so difficult. Sometimes, the right thing isn't obvious. It's like me standing in the parking lot, staring at a $20 bill, wondering if I took it, would it be like receiving a gift from God or would it be like stealing? I mean, sometimes right or wrong isn't that clear. We see this play out all the time. Like if you're dating somebody, but you're texting somebody else a lot, like, a lot, and you're like, well, I'm not cheating on anyone, we're just texting, it's not wrong, right? Or is it? Or if you have a friend who's doing something that really bothers you, and you don't know if you should talk to them about it or not, and you're wondering, if I confront them, am I just gonna look like a total jerk? I mean, is this my issue? Is this their issue? Should I just get over it? Now, in both examples, you feel the same thing. The right thing isn't always obvious. And doing the right thing can also be difficult because sometimes the right thing costs us something. When I decided to return the $20 bill to customer service, I knew it would cost me something. For one, time, because I had to go all the way back in the store and have a conversation. But it also cost me the 20 bucks that could have been mine. You know what it feels like when the right thing to do costs you something. Maybe you know what the right thing is to be honest with your parents, but if you're honest with them, you're probably gonna get grounded maybe for the rest of your life. You know the right thing isn't to go to that party, but if you don't go, you're gonna miss out, and y'all, the FOMO is real. You know that the right thing isn't to be in that relationship, but if you break up, you're gonna be single and alone. And sometimes doing the right thing costs you something. Sometimes the right thing is just no fun. There are moments when doing what's right isn't easy or exciting or even interesting. For example, you know the right thing is to babysit your younger siblings, but honestly, you don't wanna do it because they are so annoying. You know the right thing isn't to let somebody cheat off of your test, but if you say no, then somehow you wind up feeling like a loser. You know the right thing is to decline when someone offers you a drink, but it seems like everybody else who's drinking is having fun, and why do you have to be so boring? You see what I mean? Sometimes what's right feels complicated, and even when we do know what's right, sometimes it's difficult to actually do it. 
So with that in mind, let's pick back up with the story of Joseph. Now for the past two weeks, we have been on a wild journey with a boy who was sold into slavery by his own brothers. Now, even though we may not be able to relate to his specific circumstances, his life story has so much that we can apply to our own lives. What we're gonna look at today can be a game changer for all of us. It'll help us to know what to do when we don't know what to do. We left off last week with Joseph sold into slavery. We pick up this week with what happened afterwards. We're told Joseph was given to work in the house of an officer of Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh was like a king and an emperor and a president all rolled into one. Whatever Pharaoh said, that's what happened, period. So you can imagine how working for one of Pharaoh's important officials was kind of stressful. Depending on the situation, it could go really, really well, or it can go really, really bad. And there was no telling what kind of situation that Joseph was about to walk into. But like we mentioned last week, the author was quick to point out that God was with Joseph and that Joseph had favor with the official whose name was Potiphar. That means that Potiphar was a fan of Joseph's. So now let's pick up the story. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Things aren't so bad for Joseph because Potiphar trusts him. And things aren't so bad for Potiphar because with Joseph in charge, he is thriving. And then things take a really weird turn. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. Now this tells us two things. One, apparently Joseph was kinda hot. Uh, two, that his boss's wife noticed how hot he was. Now, this is where things get a little complicated because Joseph was a slave. He was obligated to not only obey Potiphar, but also obey his wife. And if he refused her commands, there was nothing holding her back from punishing him. I mean, it could cost him his status as a slave in their household, which was a much better household than the others, or it could even cost him his life. But if he did what she asked, that would create a whole other set of problems. I mean, she was married to his boss. Both options came with problems. It wasn't easy and it wasn't clear. There was no obvious answer. So what did Joseph do when he didn't know what to do? But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. Basically out of respect for Potiphar and out of an even bigger respect for God, Joseph simply did the next right thing. He didn't make a decision based on the consequences he might face because of his decision, like losing his job or even his life. He made a decision based on what was right. And what was right was turning down Potiphar's wife. It was complicated, it was challenging, but it was the right thing to do. And the thing is, it wasn't exactly like his life was perfect as a result of making the right choice. In fact, things got worse. I mean, Potiphar's wife falsely accused Joseph of rape. Potiphar believed his wife and had Joseph thrown into prison. It's not exactly the happy ending you're hoping for when you do the right thing, but Joseph didn't make his decision based on what it might mean for him. He did what was right, regardless of the outcome. Now the outcome for Joseph in the situation wasn't great, but there's a word I want you to know that changes everything when it comes to the whole doing what's right dilemma. And that word is integrity. Maybe you've heard this word before. Integrity means doing what's right regardless of the outcome. It means choosing what's right no matter what. Sometimes doing the right thing will get you an applause and sometimes it won't. Sometimes doing the right thing will cost you something and sometimes it won't. Sometimes doing the right thing will be empowering and sometimes it won't. We don't always know how choosing to do the right thing will play out, but having integrity in our decision-making leaves room for fewer regrets long-term. Chances are we are never gonna find ourselves in the kind of situation that Joseph was in but we will probably all find ourselves at a crossroads at some point where we will have to decide what to do without knowing how it's gonna play out. 
It could go better than we thought. It could go worse than we thought. But when we make our decisions with integrity based off of what is right and not off of what the outcome will be, we are living lives we can be proud of. So here's one thing we can remember. When you don't know what to do, do the next right thing. So try this. First, think of one situation where you feel stuck at a crossroads. What decision or choice causes you to feel stressed or anxious? So think about that and then second, figure out what is the next right thing for you. Here's the deal. We all sit here in church and decide we're gonna do the next right thing. And then we leave and find ourselves in the situation to do it and we don't. And that's because actually doing the next right thing is very often difficult. And because that's true, here are two bonus steps to make sure this thing really sticks. Bonus step one, tell somebody the next right thing you're gonna do. And bonus step two, invite them to ask you this week if you did it. That's how we live lives of integrity, knowing the next right thing and then doing the next right thing and inviting someone else to come alongside us. Doing the next right thing doesn't have to be the sad, lonely venture, so invite someone into your story. There is strength that shows up when you allow someone to show up with you. Now there is nothing about Joseph's decision that was easy, and there's nothing about the outcome that was good. But that doesn't mean that every right decision leads to a difficult outcome, and there's just no way of knowing that sometimes. But what we do know is that God is with us no matter how things go. And that makes any outcome so much more bearable. So as you head out, think about a situation where you need to do the next right thing. Think about exactly what you need to do. But just know, you do not have to do this alone. You can tap into the help of God and the help of others. So when you don't know what to do, do the next right thing.